Good morning and welcome to the latest edition of the Esri National Security Webinar Series. Our presentation today is titled Enabling Third-Party Data Feeds in Your GSOC. And our objective here today is to show you some ideas on how to collect and provide the earliest possible warning of real-time threats to personnel, facilities, operations, and interests. And we'll do that at every geographic level, local, national, and global. Let's introduce our team here today. My name is Carl Walter. I'm the Director of Home and Security Solutions here at Esri, and I'll be facilitating our webinar today. Our other speakers today include John Petter, and John is a solution engineer from our Esri public safety team, as well as our tech lead for Esri's disaster response team. Also joining us is Lyle Wright from our Esri commercial solutions team, where Lyle is the lead there. And he also has a focus on corporate security. And that is a newer problem set here for Esri that we're providing significant focus on. The uh, part of the reason why I have John and Lyle on our call today is they both come from previous government backgrounds, John in search and rescue and Lyle in the US military. And they are uh, both very technical, but both come from a mission background and have a great understanding of how to merge those two worlds together. Our discussion today, let's start off with just a, a couple brief statements. The public and private security organizations are increasingly coming to rely on a variety of non-traditional information sources to help predict, prevent, and respond to and manage a bunch of different planned and unplanned incidents. And we're gonna show you today here how Esri's open platform can leverage real-time feeds coming primarily from two of our business partners, NC4 and Dataminer, uh, but we will also be showing some information available through Esri's Living Atlas, as well as ArcGIS Online. And I just want to say a couple more words. Uh, so I've experienced uh, in my time in government, as well as today working with government, as well as corporate security clients, uh, a couple of things here. The, the amount of agency-owned data, and what I mean there is information that's independently collected and managed can oftentimes be a very small percentage of the data that's needed to understand and solve uh, you know, your specific security problems. And what does that mean? That means that in your agency, in your company, you need somebody that knows how to go out and find external and maybe non-traditional sources of information that are gonna supplement your information library. Uh, number one, so that's a person issue. You need somebody that can actually, that has the skills and the relationship uh, development capabilities to go out and to do that, but then you also need an analytical platform that allows you to ingest and interrelate all that data, and we believe that that platform is ArcGIS. And essentially, if you have a third party or a partner agency or entity that's willing to expose and share their data, we're confident that you can generally consume that information into the Esri platform. And we're gonna show you how to do that, explain how easy it is to do, and hopefully hit home with how powerful it can be when you're able to add essentially unlimited feeds of information to your operational picture, uh, how to manipulate those feeds, oftentimes somebody else's feed, uh, authoritative, but somebody else's, that you're able to fit into your requirements and answer your questions and solve your security problems. I, I want to talk a little bit of uh, why we, from the Esri side, have assembled a commercial team and a public safety team. And uh, it's the first time we've done that, really, and it's new for us. You know, originally these two teams here at Esri come from separate verticals, separate management, separate buildings. And, you know, along with how the mission of security has changed since 9-11, you know, we have to do that too as a private company. And, you know, we would traditionally, you know, Esri Commercial Security developing solutions for commercial companies and Esri Public Safety doing the same thing on the government side. And what, what we are seeing now that we're talking together internally is that 80% of the issues and problems are very, very similar, almost an idact, uh, a direct overlap. And, and then in turn, we create the same solutions uh, for both of those entities. What I wanna focus on really is the 20% where I think there's unique differences from public and private sector, but I wanna, I wanna really focus on that 20% uh, 20 and identify a way 
to uh, to bring those to both parties because I think there's unique differences uh, that you know that corporate security might be doing that might be very valuable to government and vice versa and we want to bring that to both parties and I and I hope we're helpful in doing that and the slide I have up here is is a lot of verbiage but really I have this up here because I think this explains the new paradigm and if you look on the left hand side where um, uh, we have laws and policies and walls that traditionally separated, I mean, primarily for this conversation, military intelligence and law enforcement. Those, those, those walls and many of those laws are blurred now, and there's a significant overlap of circles between those entities. And when it comes to GIS, when location is a common identifier, the technology doesn't care. We can integrate across those boundaries, and it doesn't matter whatever organization owns it and the the new paradigm of the home and security enterprise doesn't just involve government it involves community-based private sector and uh local state and federal government agencies too and i think we're going to try to uh you know frame our conversation today around those types of scenarios i'm gonna uh john petter if you can get ready to begin presenting uh again john's our solution engineer on the public safety side He's going to primarily talk about our uh, our main feed here in this example, and it's the NC4 Enterprise Incident Feed coming from our business partner, NC4. And this, uh, this incident feed is designed to provide a high, flexible mechanism for integrating the timely and comprehensive uh, all-hazard information into an enterprise application like ArcGIS. And this is done today in law enforcement, emergency management, corporate security, uh, for things like, uh, you know, crime prevention, business continuity, risk management. John's going to frame his conversation by bringing that feed into a couple different uh, well-known uh, web mapping applications. First, into operations dashboard, where you're going to be able to monitor key activities, key performance indicators into a very dynamic, uh, uh, dynamic dashboard. He's also going to show a couple other feeds uh, into uh, what we call Web App Builder. And Web App Builder allows you to, without writing code, build some of your own tools, create some of your own web apps for your specific workflows. You know, while the focus of our conversation is on real-time feeds, what do you do with those real-time feeds after, you know, they become a little more stagnant and static? Well, what we like to do is we like to, we like to collect that and save it and let that real-time feed become an, an additional source of historical data. And to analyze that, we're gonna use our light business intelligence tool called Insights. That's gonna allow us to kind of slice and dice those data feeds. Um, and then we're going to tell that entire story by dropping all those configurable workflows and web apps into what we call story maps, which is a great way for you to brief uh, commanders, the public, on complicated workflows in applications that make the interpretation of those workflows much easier. And again, all compiled into uh, story maps. I'm gonna turn the screen over now to John Petter and have him start out with his technical demonstrations. Thank you, Carl. So good morning, everybody. Uh, as Carl mentioned, we're gonna go through uh, some different data feeds. Uh, we will focus on um, the uh, global incident feed from our partner NC4. So what you're seeing on my screen right now is a web map. So I just sort of consider this the interoperable container that I can add uh, all sorts of different data feeds to uh, quickly and easily, uh, and then put those into different products. And the products are then suited to the individuals, whether they're decision makers or analysts, et cetera. So the first feed I'm going to um, to bring in uh, is an NC4 feed. Uh, simply here from add data, I can search for layers. Uh, I can look in my content, or in this case, in my organization, and I can look at uh, NC4 open and uh, take a look at any uh, any layers I have with my NC4 open incidents, which is here. I'll add that to the map. Uh, while that's adding to the map, how did I get that in here? Well, I actually use one of our tools called GeoEvent, and just here's a quick diagram of how that's working. Uh, 
So we have NC4 coming from a JSON input. Um, we bring it in through um, a field mapper processor in, in there, and then we're forking the feeds out. So I've got um, an output. I've got one going to a different organization, so I'm actually feeding two different feature services. And then I've got another output here, which is uh, aggregating everything. So these are sort of filtered by open incidents so that I don't clutter the map and old incidents go away. Whereas this one, I'm going to harvest everything and keep that in there for uh, future an um, analytics, as Carl mentioned, um, in tools such as Insights. So I added uh, the NC4 data in here. And as you can see, that quickly added all open incidents. Any of these uh, I can click on and I can see uh, in real time what's going on. And this is a global feed, so a really, uh, really powerful set of data to, to be able to bring in, understand what's going on. But the big piece to me is if I've got an incident happening or something going on, I need context, and context is based upon my facilities. So I am working at Esri. So what we'll do is in my organization, we'll take a look here. And I can take a look at Esri offices. So I've got Esri global offices in here. So this is sort of location, 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 right? If I have an incident that happens, but it's nowhere near one of my offices versus an incident that happens that is next to one of my offices, that makes a big difference. Some of the other um, layers of information that are very useful to bring in for context or uh, we can bring in from Esri's Living Atlas. So if we look at the Living Atlas, um, we have a filter right here on the side, and I'll just filter for environment. That's going to give us access to a, a lot of different data feeds. For example, active hurricanes, I can add that to my map pretty easily. I've got wildfire, and that will give me a, a, a real-time feed of uh, wildfires in the U.S. We have weather watches and warnings. I have MODIS, so that's uh, satellite uh, imagery. I can add that in there. Um, I can even add traffic if I if I need to do so on a granular level. I can add traffic into here. I've got it filtered by environment, so I'll clear that. But I can bring the world traffic service in there. I won't do that right now because it'll really clutter the map. So just taking a look here, I've now got Esri locations listed in here, and uh, you can see I've got some scale dependency listed on listed on these, but I can change that pretty easily so we can see those. So I've got my Esri offices, I've got incidents, and here's one right here, uh, right, right in uh, and San Antonio, right here. I have um, an Esri office. I have two incidents going on right next to it. In fact, we have a shooting that's happened right here. Uh, and then I've also got some modus data saying that we've got some thermal activity in the area. So the web map gives you a lot of information, but it doesn't give you a lot of context. It's just a lot of stuff on a map. So the first real question when you're building some sort of a product is, who am I building it for? So in my mind, you've got two um, the major personas of a decision maker, we'll call an operator and an analyst, someone that's actually digging into the data a little bit more and wants to interact. So we've got some tools, as uh, Carl mentioned, uh, to help build these. By clicking the Share button and Create a Web App, I've simply got the option here of using one of our configurable app templates in which Esri has got a lot of different app templates readily available. We have the Web App Builder tool, and I generally find that a tool that I give to analysts and give them a lot more functionality and different tools to, to do some, um, you know, to really investigate the data. An operations dashboard. Operations dashboard is great for um, the main screen of the GSOC or uh, any sort of operations where I would need to know big picture, not just all the dots and everything that's going on the map, but give me some metrics, give me some numbers, help me understand what's going on. So let's just take a look at a couple examples of those. So I have a dashboard here, which has been built out with the NC4 incidents, my Esri offices, and again, I'm leveraging GeoEvent. And with GeoEvent, I'm leveraging that as well to put buffers and perimeters around the Esri offices to understand what incidents are happening near my facilities, the facilities that we care about. So I've got uh, a fully interactive map in the middle. 
you can see we've got a, a hurricane coming in right now here and over in India. Um, I've got on the left-hand side a list element, and the list lists all of the incidents within one mile of an Esri facility. I've also got a stacked version of this within 50 miles. There's different incident types. You may want a different incident buffer. A wildfire might be five to 10 miles. An active shooter, you may want a more granular reference, like maybe a mile or something from your facility. And then I've even got a count by office, so I can see how many potential incidents near the main office, our Esri Portugal office, France, et cetera. So this is interactive. But the nice thing is when you walk into an operations center and you look at the wall, you can see what's going on. How many are, um, of my facilities are potentially at risk? What are the categories of what's going on? What's my summary? What's my uh, derived threat level here? And a simple legend here for, for what's going on. Now I can dig in a little, a little easier, a little deeper, sorry, just by looking at um, frequency. When are things happening? So you can see if we start to see a rise in incidents, there might be something going on um, throughout the world or throughout where the area that I'm monitoring. And that's a change from the normal. So anytime there's a change from a normal, it's something we want to pay attention to. So this simple um, chart here allows us to do that. I've also got filters attached to this as well, where right now we're showing all incidents, but a lot of the minor ones really don't matter to me too much. Maybe I just want to look at moderate and severe. So now I can simply filter um, on not only my list, but my alert categories and everything here reacted to that simple filter that I've been on by severe and moderate. Do I care um, about the time frame so I can add additional filters into here? So show me within the last six hours. So you can see in the last six hours, things have been pretty quiet and I've got nothing here um, affecting an Esri office within uh, one mile. Within 50 miles, I actually do have a couple. So these are really, really powerful tools to build out the dashboard um, with various elements. Uh, Carl mentioned earlier there was no coding required for these, and there's really not. Um, and they're incredibly powerful tools, especially for the decision makers and the operators. So it's great to have everything here on, this, on a map, but what if we could actually visualize this in 3D as well and have a 3D view of incidents that are going on? So we've added a few sort of standard slide bookmarks to this so we can easily navigate throughout the world in 3D. There's just another powerful way of looking at data on a single screen uh, along with the metrics. So this is great and I find operators really like this as a product because it does give them instant glance and instant read uh, information to what's going on. For an analyst, you might need something a little bit more granular. Now granted, this is a, a pretty busy map and I don't normally like to put too much on a map, uh, but what we have here is using the info summary widget, I've pulled in exactly the same sets of data as used in the dashboard. Under NC4, I can take a look at these and I can see the different, uh, the different incidents that are happening throughout the world here. So we can click on any of these and this one's in Sudan and we can see what's going on here. And this was a very quick way to navigate. And again, you can see our hurricane coming in from the Living Atlas feed right here and any incidents that are happening in the context over there. On top of just the NC4, we have some of the other um, layers like the, the wildfires, which I showed you earlier. We have active storm reports. So we can see in Palm Beach here, we have an active storm report. So for an analyst, the question isn't just what's going on, it's what's the context. If there's a, a chemical fire in the middle of nowhere, 50 miles from anywhere, I'm not too bothered about it. But if that chemical fire is next to a school, then I really care about it. So it's always about location and location. So if we take a look at this, at this windstorm right here, or we can take a look and see that we've got a motor vehicle accident. What's near this motor vehicle accident would be the question. So we can bring in other data, and in this case, we're just bringing in data from Highfeld, which is publicly available data, and this is just demonstrative. Obviously, what you'd really want to bring in would be your, your critical infrastructure, your facilities, things that mean something to you. But by running this tool, I can now identify nursing homes, and it gives you the location right there. Number of public schools in this area as well, daycare centers in this area, mobile homes, 
and even bridges, and we've even brought in from RX Open the number of pharmacies. So if you think about managing um, a disaster, where um, that's really a powerful one to bring in. Now that the analyst needs to report out within two miles of this location what happened. So the easy way to do that is to generate a quick report and run a PDF. This, this will uh, create a report for you in a PDF format that allows you to quickly and easily disseminate to leadership or anyone needs to understand. Maybe you need to give it to uh, one of your ESFs for evacuation status and to advise these people, drop it into a mass notification system. So this is a very, very powerful, is drawing a map right now, a very powerful tool for this. Here we go. And it gives you all that information wrapped up from the situational awareness. In this webinar, we don't have time to go through all the different elements in here, but we have threat analysis, we have emergency response guide and plume tools, so we have um, coordinates and coordinate conversion, directions, etc. This is a web app builder and it's built very easily from configurable widgets with no code required. So I've got a dashboard and I've got this, but how do we put them together to put it into um, a format that is pretty consumable by everybody? So I find for that, putting them into um, a story map is very powerful. So this is the builder mode in story map. And simply adding tabs into a story map, and as you add a tab, you can just put in the URL. So in this case, this is the URL of the dashboard, and it appears in a tab of the story map. If I look at the, the finished product here, this allows me to have one single URL that anyone can now have bookmarked on their web browser. The content here is dynamic and can change. So I don't have to hunt around and find where is that product. I've now got what I would call a suite of products. I have a decision makers operations dashboard for big picture situation awareness with filters and metrics that tell me what's going on. By clicking the next tab, I've now got that incident analysis tool for a, um, a more of an analyst persona to work on and dig into the data. I've also got an animation here so we can time animate um, incidents around the world and see how that's coming in. And that can be the real time or we could even use the historic feed for that. Carl also mentioned earlier a little bit about doing some analytics. So I showed you how we fork that feed off into open incidents and then all incidents. All incidents enables me to do some analysis. So by bringing all of the data here into our product insights, for instance, I can see what are the trends in the time of day and the day of week of when incidents happen. What are the types of incidents by, by current accounts throughout the world? What's the frequency? Again, if I'm doing an, um, analytics on this, this can tell me you know, themes. And is something going out of, out of norm? And by type, and I've also got an interactive map here. But then I can also do the same thing, but bring it in around my facilities. So this is trends within 50 miles of my Esri offices around the world. This is now interactive as well, and I can look at these so I could see the severe and interact with these, and everything will change on that. How do we build this? Well, that's pretty simple. I can take a look at the model that was used to build this, where I'm adding data, putting spatial filters in around the offices, aggregations, et cetera, and now we can share this with other members of our organization so anyone can run these analytics on there. So that's an overview of many of the, or sorry, sorry, of several of the different tools we have to not only bring in data from, uh, from other outside sources, such as NC4, but aggregating that and marrying that up with all the open data that we have in the living atlas of the world, bringing your own information in. I showed Esri facilities, but this could be your own information. And then building a couple of useful information products for different people within your organization. So I hope that was helpful. And with that, back to you, Carl. Okay, thanks, John. That was a lot of information in about 15 minutes. I'm going to uh, recap, I think, for the, for the audience, just a couple of the key things that are takeaways there. You know, our, our presentation here is based on information feeds. We showed that with NC4. We showed that with a lot of the Living Atlas feeds. Uh, and then we brought all of those into a variety of different web mapping applications to help you understand that data, interrogate that data, and uh, 
uh, and inform operations and share that data, whether it's to commanders, to the public, to the media, lots of options there. The key piece here is, and the, one of the main value adds uh, and the money saver is that a lot of that information, I'll call it non-traditional, I'll call it third party, is authoritative. It's information that your agency does not have to collect, quality control, manage. It's something that as long as you can get access to it, a lot of it was free, which I showed you, as long as you can get access to it, you can take full advantage of uh, almost unlimited additional sources of information into your, into your operational picture. And the interesting thing there is somebody may expose a feed for a business case, use case that they had. You just need access to that feed and you can use that feed any way you want, maybe in a very, very different way than the original makers intended. And the great thing is it's, uh, it's all web-based, it's authoritative, and it's a, it's a no-brainer on things that you should be adding to your picture there. I'm gonna move now into our next presenter, and Lyle Wright is gonna join us now. And he's going to do some similar things, but maybe in a, a little different way. His primary fee that he's going to be talking about is coming from our business partner, Data Miner. And Data Miner, uh, among other things, is a public social media platform aggregator. And Lyle's going to explain this in some of the same apps that John showed, a couple different ones, Survey123, um, uh, and maybe a couple more. But I've asked him to look at it a couple different ways when he brings that Data Miner feed. I want him to look at global scenarios, national, and I want him to bring it down to regional and neighborhood level types of things. And you know, this is this is a real time data uh, webinar. But I also want him, in addition to the real time pieces, I want him to go back and find some things in the not too distant past, so we can show the the current and the past all in one kind of operational environment. And I will turn this over to Lyle and take it away. Hey, thanks, Carl. So we'll start out with understanding a bit more of our data provider, which we call a business partner of ours, Data Miner. Data Miner allows the corporations that are our customers in corporate security space to understand information about real-time threats as soon as possible. Data Miner allows those customers to take advantage of this cutting edge way that they're able to essentially go out and look at billions of messages in a way about posts, data, artifacts, and uncover that information about what's critical. So what does it look like if you're a data miner customer and you're utilizing this application? Well, they look at things in four different ways. They have real-time alerting, real-time alert search, historical references, and area analysis. They allow you to have information in the form of these tabs, such as the first tab I have here, it's just a few things that I'm looking and paying attention to. So as corporate security um, um, business people in the banking environment, we they care about ATMs. So I'm looking at ATM um, issues, I'm looking at crime, and I'm looking at terrorism. This allows me to just get a basic understanding of what's happening in the world. I also have the ability to look at the list that I care about. So there's a few different ways that you can build lists. And the first way is what we call topic lists. Topic lists allow you to essentially set the geographic location, you name that in that actual list, and then you go through and choose the different topics that they have already uh, called out as subtopics and, and um, region or topics such as crime, disaster, weather, to understand exactly what you're interested in. So we have one that we have there that's essentially we've identified all the topics that are uh, relevant so that we get all the information coming in from Datamire. We also have this, I idea of company lists. So if you want to watch a particular company, you can type that company in and get information about that, that company itself. So corporate security people utilize this to see what kind of traffic is being generated about their actual company itself. And then you have custom lists. Custom lists allow you to understand different topics. So a current trend that's happening right now is the NBA Finals. So we have something where we're looking at information there. You saw that list that we talked about before for ATM, crime, and terrorism are there. So these are my lists. So what I want to do is I want to be able to utilize this information into the RTS platform to gather more information about it. So let's go ahead and just jump to our desktop application and showcase a tool that we've been able to utilize to, to go ahead and, and um, 
explore this data a bit more. So I start out with a geoprocessing model I have here, and this geoprocessing model allows me to essentially pull in multi-day pool of data miner content. I have the information given me here is that I can either pull it by a list or a keyword. If I look at the list, it allows me to dynamically link to that list of information that came from data miner. I also have the ability to look at the keyword. So if I was to come here and say, hey, let's go ahead and um, choose a keyword, I could choose that keyword and it would allow us to do that. But let's go ahead and just look at a list and the list that I wanna pull is that NBA finals list. And essentially, I'm gonna look at how much content has come in in the last 10 days related to this topic. So I'll run this tool. It's gonna to go ahead and scrape that information from there and, and dump that into a local database to allow me to start understanding a bit more about that information. And as we come in, we start seeing all the alerts that come in. So it looks like there's about 50 alerts. And when we add this information to the map, we get a few different things. So we have just the basic um, topics such as these um, alerts and, um, and urgent or alert. So they categorize their information in three different ways. Something that's really, really important is categorized as a flash. Something that's categorized as just general knowledge is alert. And then something that might have a little more reference to it would be um, an alert. So this is the information that comes in. We have that information here. And if we want to gain more information about the stuff, we have identified a few charts of just how to look at this. So let's go ahead and just look at the count of this information. So First off, we'll look at just how this information is coming in. So this is just a basic data clock to understand over that pool, where was the, the, the bulk of that information coming in. So we see that on 6.6, .6, this came in between these, these times. So we start to understand this and we can identify and we can select this information and zoom to that information we want to. Let's go ahead and just look at one of these events. So that's the event I just selected. Let's just go ahead and highlight that and gather some more information about this. So we look at here and it's just some basic information about something that happened in the last game where an individual got hurt. Kevin Durant ended up getting hurt. And normally what we would have to do is we'd come here and we'd go to the actual link of that actual alert. But what I wanna do is I wanna utilize this, the information that comes in data miner to not only see this one alert, but also see all the alerts that are associated with this particular alert. So now I have that first alert here that comes in, but then I have this event timeline of everything that's happened around that particular alert. So I can start to understand the trend about that information, not just that one bit of information, but the actual entire trend about that information. So that allows us to do that. So one of the things that we wanna look at is that now this information, as we started consuming this information, what would this look like to a corporate security individual that needed to track this information on a global level? So let's go ahead and go back to our data miner and, let, and let's look at our data miner dashboard. So now what I'm looking at is information at a global scale. Um, a corporate security, um, Global Security Operations Center, and I have thousands of messages coming in a lot. And these are messages that I'm trying to understand more information about. And I could do that by exploring the data. Right now, we're looking at the last seven days of the data. Um, if there's a particular location that I'm concerned with, I can just highlight that on the map. It zooms directly to that location. I can see all the other um, incidents that are happening in here. So this ends up filtering down to just what's on my map. And then if I need to actually see that information on the actual source, I'm able to see that information right there. So let's go ahead and, and just um, think about some of the things that we could possibly do. So let's go ahead and just pick some of these categories and let's say, hey, I wanna see all the crime that's happened in the last seven days. And I really don't care about the alerts or urgent, I just wanna see these flash reports. So now I'm gonna minimize that information to see any alerts that have happened for flash and let's just change this to 30 days and see what comes in. So essentially I have three different events that are coming through flash. If let's say I wanna look at all the flash alerts that have happened for all categories, I could do that as well. So I'm just dynamically exploring the data as it comes in. I can go to this data overview that allows me not only to understand the amount of activity that's happened, but also the different categories of this information. And so if I click this, it's going to minimize that information here to just be disasters weather. So I'm able to kind of explore this information in a critical way. How could I utilize this to look at all the information? Let's go back to seven days. Let's look at all categories. This here, let's unselect that.
and now I get all the information that's available to me. So as I start to explore this, if I want to just look at one particular um, bit of information, the, these charts dynamically change based on what I'm interested in to get a better understanding of this particular event of what's happening. So let's go back and let's look at just the alerts for the last 30 days from Flash. Let's go back to the map and let's identify some of these key locations that we can look at. So I have nine um, alerts that have happened in that time. I can go ahead and just select one of these flash alerts and get basic information about that information. And this is exactly what I need to see is just the basic information of what the actual event is. If someone wants me to go back in and, and figure that out, I still have that dynamic linking of understanding the information in data miner of all the information that is related to that. So I get a basic information of a flash alert, and then from that flash alert, I get to understand all the information about it. So data miner allows us now in the RTS platform to be able to explore this information. Just like you saw John, how he had his dashboard set up around his organization, you could also do that information with this as well in data miner. This is a great way of understanding how to consume a business partner's uh, software or their data and their, their capability into our software to empower the different workflows that you have. So that's one example of how you do this. So I work in solutions and the solutions organization is broken up into different industries. So we focus on our industries and our, our main goal is to understand the workflows that our customers are utilizing in a way to allow them to understand how to get started, not from scratch, but with some basic understanding workflows that can then be consumed within their organization. So what else do we have to offer from the corporate security um, offering to, to enable our customers currently? Well, we have this application called Business Resilience. All of our applications come with fully documented workflows that allow you to understand not only how to utilize the application, but how to get started. We enable our information to be deployed directly into your organization via ArcGIS Online or via Enterprise to allow you to then pour your data in to that application and get started quickly. So what does an application like that look like? So this is an application called Business Resilience. It's a solution template that allows any organization to understand what is happening on the ground at multiple locations. So here's an, here's an example of a majority of assets for facilities. These could be retail stores, these could be manufacturing sites, these can be um, offices, they can be a, a variety of things. But what I needed to be able to do is understand who's at each individual facility and how to contact that individual very quickly to understand what and how I can utilize um, the information on the ground to impact the situation or the decisions that we need to make from a higher level of headquarters or a corporate office. So an example would be upcoming hurricane season that I believe that my counterpart told me began in June. So one of the areas we know that will be affected by the hurricane season would be Florida. And what I wanna be able to do is I wanna be able to understand just the current impacts and trending things that might be happening in this area. I also wanna be able to check with each of these different facilities to make sure that they haven't been threatened by this event. So how do I do that? Many times when we set up applications, we have all of our data and our ducks are in a row. And then something like hurricane season comes and I need to add more information. So from here, what I can do is just go to add some data to the map. And what I wanna do is add some some information from our living atlas that we can just tap into by ta typing in hurricane. So I'm an analyst inside of a GSOC operation. You know, I don't truly understand everything that's made available through um, uh, out there. I don't want to have to create a, a hurricane track or anything of that nature. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and just reset set this for a second. Um, I wanna be able to consume those authoritative data feeds that are out there to allow me to make a better decision and to just quickly allow my operations to, um, to roll as they, as they do. So the first thing I wanna do is just look for hurricanes. So we go ahead and look at hurricane, I'm gonna look at ArcGIS Online and just see what's out there. So the first thing I wanna be able to do is just add this active hurricane. So this um, here allows me to essentially just be able to 
understand where these hurricane tracks are as they happen. When I arrive at the actual topic, just by looking at the more details of this actual data feed, I understand it's authoritative, so it's recommended by Esri. It's a part of our Esri curated content, and you'll have to be a subscriber to get access to this. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that information to the map. I also wanna know where recent hurricanes are. I think John showed that there was a recent hurricane off the coast of India. Let's go ahead and look at, we have some um, hurricane tracks that have um, happened out here on the east um, of Florida. So those are two just curated content that we can explore. The next thing I wanna do is just understand more about what's happening or what to, to understand more about Florida. So I'm gonna just type in Florida traffic. And what I start to get is, is this crowdsourced information. So information coming from other users that have possibly done a little bit more work around the actual um, problem of Florida traffic. So this is a uh, Living Atlas slated, it's Esri curated content, it's from a user. And what it allows us to do is understand the amount of traffic that happens on a particular highway inside of Florida. So I'm gonna add that as well. And then let's zoom into our Tampa area and just get a better understanding of what's happening around there. So if I click on this layer, what it does, it allows me to understand the, the average traffic that's happening on each of these individual layers. The last thing I wanna do is I wanna be able to be prepared to, to route people to an area based on what's happening currently. So I understand I have the hurricane track, I have what happened before where the hurricanes happened in the recent past, I have this hurricane or this traffic pattern to understand that. Let's go ahead and just look for Florida traffic cameras to get a better understanding of what's out there. So then Florida DOT, someone has put together a, a layer that allows me to understand that information as well. Go ahead and just turn off this Florida traffic. Let's zoom into our Tampa area. And now I have all the different traffic cameras that are associated with my Tampa area. So I, I got some basic information and if I click one of these points, what I'm able to get access to is that actual real time or near real time um, traffic feed of what's happening there. That's gonna be very, very helpful to me to understand exactly what points that I wanna control. The other thing I can do is I can take this point here, such as this, and I could just put it at a marker here. So I'm gonna add a couple markers to key locations that I'm gonna watch. So as I start understanding what is happening on the ground, I can go back and say, hey, where are those proof points that we're utilizing to understand exactly what's happening? So I'm just gonna kind of mark all the different um, call the directions that's coming out of uh, Tampa to understand those traffic patterns. Now what I wanna do is I wanna be able to come in here and say, um, let's go ahead and just create an assessment report that we can send out to this, all these organizational stores to understand what's happening. So I'm just gonna go ahead and highlight my Tampa area and supporting areas, and I created this report. So this um, widget essentially allows us to print a report that we can then send out via email. It allows each of these different facility IDs to understand, hey, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get um, a better understanding of what's currently happening on the ground. So I'm asking a few different questions to our users. I'm asking, hey, um, the exterior vulnerability, what's the, the impact of the building, interior, employee, and just allowing them to ask a few questions. So as they start to fill out these questions, they submit this, and we'll go back from there. And now that report comes back. That assessment allows us to understand that there's an open report here. I can click on that report and I can start to understand some basic stuff. So I'll go ahead and say, hey, this one came in. Oh. Let's zoom back over to our Tampa area and find that, that assessment. And then what that allows me to do is I can review these assessments to allow that organization to then be that part of the organization to understand exactly how they were impacted by this event. So this application is called Business Resilience. It allows us to then start to understand exactly how these individuals um, are possibly impacted by this particular event. So with that, what I would like to do is hand it back over to Carl and I'll go for a recap. 
Okay, I'm going to share some basic contact, uh, contact information while we're going over the, kind of the recap and the and some questions that have come in. Uh, our email our emails are all down here at the bottom of this page. You can contact us uh, together independently, whatever directly, whatever you want to do. Uh, and again, you also on the on the go to webinar software have the ability to ask more questions on that as well as ask us to contact you for uh, a more in depth and you uh, feel free to to use those however you want to recap some of the things that uh, that Lyle just talked about and to and to summarize it and it was a lot we started off with a uh, just a sort of a demonstration from within the data miner UI itself of how they how they are a uh, a social media platform aggregator. We brought that information integrated into the ArcGIS platform and through a series of web maps and web apps, we were able to do a bunch of different things that we want to do for our specific use cases and whatnot. And why, if I'm a GSOC command, uh, manager or a, operate, a government operations center manager or director, why does that why does any of that matter? Um, I Two questions that I get, and they're polar opposites. I, I don't have any data. I hear that almost daily, and I have too much data. I also hear that. Very different questions, and I think we showed you today uh, how to answer really both of those. The I don't have data is, I mean, there are incredible third-party options out there, but there are also, uh, like Data Miner and NC4, there are also options through ArcGIS Online and through the Living Atlas for two things. Uh, if you're already invested in the in the Esri ecosystem, all that is free on the Living Atlas and ArcGIS Online side to to leverage those and and exploit those data sources. Uh, they're free, they're authoritative, but there's also a whole other source of information that may not come from government sources that are less than certainly not authoritative, less than authoritative that also can help you frame your operational picture and that may be part of the nuggets that you want to evaluate uh, as you're coming in and out of a, uh, of a problem set or a business problem or a, or a major incident. And then again, the I have too much data. I think we showed uh, uh, unbelievable abilities to, to collect, to filter, to focus, and to distribute as you want through a series of different uh, business applications through insights, through the query capabilities that, that Lyle showed you in, in some of the web applications that he showed. Uh, so I think it was a, I think it was a pretty uh, a horizontal conversation on handle a lot of different business questions. We do have time for a couple questions, and I just want to review what came in here. I think our so I have three questions here, and I think, Lyle, you can probably answer them all, and I'm just going to go ahead and kind of consolidate the questions and aggregate them but ba and, and maybe rephrase. Uh, we showed NC4, we showed Data Miner, and we showed Living Atlas as kind of sources of information. How, how do I get each one of those? Uh, what's free and what's extra? And what's the what's the best way to figure out that? Because there are some complexities in there that people will need to understand. Yeah, Carl, thanks. What we have here is we have a variety of data feeds that we're working with from our business partners. And if those are things that are interested of you, please contact us and we can help um, enable you to understand and how to connect to this information. The application you saw, Business Resilience Today, is a free application that you could download and start utilizing if you are a current Esri uh, customer. It works inside of your enterprise or your um, SaaS environment in ArcGIS Online, and that's available through the solutions.arcgis.com website. And if you're looking to utilize any of these data feeds that we showed today, you can also contact us and we'll, uh, we'll allow you to understand how to get started. And I have one more question, Lyle. I think you can address this one too. I don't have access to developers. What is the skill set required to configure these web mapping applications? Yeah, so the business resilience web mapping application you saw today is delivered by solutions as a way of we give you step-by-step -step process of how to pour your data into it and utilize all the different widgets that were there. John said this as well, that these are configurable 
widgets so that you are expected to do very minor configuration. You don't have to be a developer. Web App Builder is, is there to allow you to be, to understand how to utilize these out of the box widgets to then jumpstart some of the workflows that you have. So you don't have to be a developer. You can just get started if you're just a, a, a an individual that's just in, interested in technology, interested in how to empower your organization. If you do want to go the developer route, there's a route for you as well with Web Builder. But we're going to focus on how to enable our customers with these out of box configured applications and widgets. All right, perfect. That's the last question that came in. Uh, again, I'll remind you the the uh, video or the webinar is recorded. We'll share that out with you as a YouTube video in the next 48 hours. And if any additional questions that you're interested in talking to us about, please just indicate that on the GoToWebinar uh, uh, application and we can recontact you directly or you can just type in questions there and we can email you back. And that's the end of the webinar today. Thanks and have a great day.